Cougs House. The Houston Cougars embark on the summer of 23 to do the same recruiting trail as a lot of other Big 12 schools to get ready for the Big 12 Conference, but they're going about a little bit, little bit different way with some JUCO-type kids. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, the daily podcast all about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Ainsworth, here to break down all things Cougs. If you're a U of H fan or just a hater came to stop by, please be sure to subscribe down below. That way, you can lay us on the Cougs in your news feed each and every day. We appreciate you making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's good to see you again as we see you every day here at Locked On Cougs. Remember to subscribe, like, and comment. We're doing a giveaway every 250 subscribers. The next of which is at 12 video. You can weigh a hat just like the one I got on. Cougar Paw locked on the side. It's a Nike Dry Fit hat. A new hat is going to someone at 1250. So make sure you subscribe down below and help the show get there. Today we're talking some about recruiting, specifically the recruiting for the expansion team that is uh, for the Big 12, the Houston Cougars. Uh, but we're looking at the junior college ranks specifically. Uh, now that's a little tricky to find film on and things like that. So Without further ado, we're going to bring in Brian Smith, recruiting expert, to help us talk through what exactly Houston's looking at in the junior college ranks. And we welcome in recruiting expert Brian Smith. Brian, you're getting pretty familiar with these Locked On podcasts these days. How are you doing today? (laughs) I'm doing well. It's uh, my favorite time, man. All the visits are starting, and it's uh, it's a big day for Houston and everybody else because the visits are coming, and Got to find out who you can land for your future. Well, and I'm hoping we'll talk about some big names that Houston could be landing in the near future. But I got to ask, is June just absolute chaos for you? Is it just uh, just nuts? Unexplainable. <laughs> Unexplainable. I, I, I will literally either be at a camp uh, talking on the phone with somebody or messaging with somebody 12 to 15 hours a day every day. There's, there's a, there is no day off. Well, in, in the, first of all, thank you for taking the time then for us, but in the, in the sense of no time off, um, Houston has gone this route, and it's kind of a Hogerson staple, it looks like if you look at the time West Virginia as well, where they're hitting this junior college track for some guys to help them ready for the Big 12. Uh, it is June, but obviously the big news for Houston is July 1st, we're in the Big 12, and all the fun that comes with that, the Big 12 football schedule next season. I want to talk first about um, some kids that Houston's targeting, and then the second segment about some kids that Houston has signed because I think those are more familiar names. And then the last segment, just about this idea of a Juco approach as a whole, but we talked off air in the pre-pod about Kevin Kalanji. Now this kid is a six, six, 330 pound offensive tackle from Coffeeville. Um, that's up in Kansas. I believe if my yes. geography serves me correct. Um, some places happens a three star junior college recruit, but that is a giant man for just three stars. That's, that's a lot of chest to fit across three stars. what did you see when you saw Kevin Kalanji working out? Two things. Number one, I'm like, holy cow, that's one human being. And then number two, he, he actually can move pretty well in space. Usually kids that play with that much power and have that much natural mass from the waist up, like his chest, he's probably got literally a hard time finding shirts. His chest is just massive. They usually can't move in space. He did pretty good when he moved out on a stretch play or he pulled. And I'm like, okay. So he could play guard or possibly right tackle. I don't think he's got the feet for left, but he could move. And, I mean, the run game, it's automatic. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he's what you're looking for there because he's super physical. He, he just absolutely plowed over some guys. So I'm curious to see where he ends up because I think he can be a multiple-year starter at the Power 5 level. So you think he is a Big 12? Because the big thing for Houston is can we find Big 12 caliber linemen? Oh, he can absolutely play in the Big 12, yes. Because when I see 6-6-3-30, and I don't mean to spend the whole time on Kalanji, but when I see 6 6 30 I worry about, like, can he play 75 snaps, right? Like, I worry about that kind of stuff. But um, You can that- always change conditioning. You can't change the arm length. You can't change <laughs> the natural. You know, that's why they that a lot of people get mad about this, but coaches recruit measurables. And then they fine tune. That's just what they do. And this kid's got, he's got, this is the kind of kid Georgia recruits. 
to put it in perspective and tries to find a spot for him in a couple of years after they coach him up or whatever out of high school. But this kid's junior college, so he's a little further along. Technically, he could start at Houston. Absolutely. Well, and that's, I mean, help on the offensive line be great. That's obviously a big area of concern. And moving into the Power Five, right, because group of five linemen are just a little bit different than Power Five linemen. Um, it looks like he's between Houston, Maryland, and Appalachian State. Um, he is from the DMV, so Maryland's got me a little worried. Um, but, you know, Houston obviously would be, as a, a Power Five school there, a fairly big program as far as those go. So interesting to see where he ends up. Um, a position that is something you can never have too many of is DBs. And this kid, uh, Jair Smith, is coming in from College of San Mateo. Um, originally a kid from Charlotte, actually, North Carolina. Um, sixth one, which is a bigger safety, um, 185. What do you see out of J.R. Smith when you looked at him online? He plays some corner. He could play safety. He can really run. Um, not technically where he needs to be yet, like pretty much 99.9% .9 of the kids that haven't played at the Power 5 level yet, and even most of them at the Power 5 level. Corner's hard especially with all the new rules always favoring the offense. You, you look at a guy that threw a flag. But at the same time, you can't teach the measurables. Uh, he, he is completely from the frame and the speed. He's what you're looking for. He has length. So that's all power five. But now it's just can he – because I, I told you this earlier. If you're going to come to this league – if you're going to play corner, you better be ready because they can throw it in the Big 12. So <laughs> you better be careful what you're signing into. Um, is he just ready for that mentally? There's no way to know because, like, corner is the most unique spot. You you need kids that are almost just jerks because they don't care what happened to them because it's got to be next play mentality. You're going to lose more reps than you win. It's like being a, a hitter in baseball. You, if you bat 300, it's great, but you lost seven out of ten. Not many people <laughs> deal well with that. It's just true. You know, a corner, you don't have as many advantages. So – Physical traits are there. He can run. He can he can really move in space. He's a kid. It's going to get even more offers as the year goes on. I wouldn't be surprised to see some major SEC schools offer him because you can't teach those measurables. So in corner is the hardest spot to recruit. Most kids would if they had that kind of talent, they want to play offense. They want. <laughs> it's just true. It's not even. Yeah. It's ten well, to one. Like it's ten to one. And honestly, if you're looking at kids that can make it to the next level, they're going to get paid more. <laughs> like, on, like, like they're thinking about length of careers and how much money they'll make as a receiver uh, a lot of the time um, as far as where they project. Speaking of kids that can get paid more in the NFL, the last prospect I want to talk about is a kid that may be a reach for the Houston of the past, but in moving the Big 12, you got to land a couple of these kids, and he may be the first one we talk about landing in this junior college route. Uh, Michael Nokocha, he is uh, originally from Tyler, went to Tyler Junior College, and he I've seen him as a three- and four-star on JUCO rankings, which are all kind of hit or miss, but his other offer lists include Georgia, Mississippi State, LSU, but he's got Houston in his top five. 6'4", um, 290-pound defensive lineman. Talk to us, because we went back and forth in DMs actually about this guy's tape. Tell me what you saw on tape on this kid. I always use the same measurables as the guys that I, I see on the recruiting trail, the coaches and stuff. Georgia is probably the pickiest school with D linemen, and they, they can be, but it's also because of their scheme. If you're asking kids to two gap, they got to be animals. When I say two gap for people who don't know, that means you literally line up in front of some massive human being and the gap on each side of them, you hit them and you look and you, you, you kind of throw them out of the way and go get somebody. I mean, you've got to have bull strength. He has that, and he also has the ability to chase down running backs. It was a play on his film. I'm like, okay, we're good here. The running back <laughs> ran outside, was way ahead of him, and somebody that's 2'8", whatever the hell he is, ran down a kid that weighs 100 pounds less than him. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> okay, sometimes it's just not that hard. He is an animal. He has a chance to play in the NFL. Uh, Georgia, like you said, is recruiting him. Based on what he did, I immediately said, this is a Georgia kid. This is a Georgia level player. Uh, somebody's going to get a ball player is going to come in and start for a year and probably go to the NFL. So, yes, he would change Houston's program. Yes, there's a good chance he would be the best player in their program rather quickly. But if you're going to compete at the Big 12 level and also be good, you have to find a way to get him. So I have no idea where his recruitment stands. We don't really talk a lot to Juco kids, but my gosh, this, this guy's really special talent. Well, and it's interesting to see that like, you know, 
Houston in becoming a power program in the Houston area. I guess Tyler is a few hours north. Obviously, it's not sure. exactly, but it Bandy it does Texas, feel maybe. Yeah, it, it, East Texas near that Louisiana border. It feels like you've got to land some of the best kids in That's this cool. half the state at least, right? Um, yes, and he yes. certainly strikes you as one of those. He can play for if Georgia offers a defensive lineman. I mean, you can take my word for it if you like, but you should take Kirby Smarts first. <laughs> I'm I'm a hundred percent positive on that. I don't need to research that at all. He has the hardware on his fingers to back that statement up, and we'll just go from there. But uh, back to back national champions, <laughs> a handful of a handful of D linemen specifically picked in the top ten in the NFL draft. <laughs> I think he knows Including what he's one doing. that just went number one overall. Yeah, yeah. There's nowhere, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that, that's that's the program you should trust. <laughs> yeah, this kid can play in a one gap or two gas scheme. He's 280. He's strong. He's physical and he hustles. That's the last thing. Some of the, the knocks on Juco kids that I've always heard, the talent's there, but they're, they're a head case. They don't always play hard. Blah, 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 blah. This kid goes 100 mile an hour. He's a total package. So, yeah, that, that's, that's a game changer. That, that's what Houston needs, period. All right. So, Brian's going to tell us more in a moment about uh, some of the signed kids Houston has from the junior college ranks. But first, we got to talk some about FanDuel. That's because it is time to make a fast break during these NBA playoffs or in the NBA finals. And right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's a new number, that $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win now. You know, on this show, we typically go for Houston area guys. It's for Houston, for the city at all times. I have to say that when looking at this, it's worth pointing out the Miami Heat and Tom Ball's own Jimmy Butler are at plus 280 to win the series. I understand that it would be like the most giantest upset of all of NBA playoffs. It's not very common that a team in a seven game series pulls off the kinds of upsets that Miami would have to do to pull that off but it's also not that common that Miami would be in the situation in the first place they were again down with 10 minutes left in the second playing game that was a loser go home kind uh, or winner go home sorry kind of game loser go home kind of game and I have to say that like they continue to defy the odds, and the odds at FanDuel are great. That's hard to pass up on. There's no better place, in fact, to bet on all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. So let's talk about some kids that you mentioned kids that they need in the last segment kids. They've got, they've, they've signed one, this, uh, this, uh, signing period. And then they signed one back in February junior college kids. And we'll talk in the last segment, some of what that means in the junior college route, but you expect junior college kids to kind of be ready to come in and play, right? Um, the goal would be in theory that this kid, these kids have played some college snaps already, or at least against college type athletes already. Um, Talik Robbins comes in as a defensive lineman, 6'3", listed at 300, um, Northeast Mississippi Community College, originally from Pennsylvania. Um, he he commits to Houston um, just, uh, I guess it's been 10 or 12 days ago at this point. But in looking up more about him, I got to be honest, I didn't know much about this kid before he got the offer and committed. Um, and so what do you see out of Talik Robbins? And what um, what can you tell us about playing in Northeast Mississippi, frankly? Well, he's from Philly. Uh, Ole Miss was the first to get to him. They placed him at a JUCO. Watching his film, I can see why an SEC school wanted him out of high school. Power. He can play the one technique, which is, again, it's we're talking about sheer bull strength because the guy in front of you is not very friendly and you don't want your mom to meet probably. So it's the kind of situation where they got to get bigger in the middle. They've got to be able to stop the run. Um, and he, I mean, he can rush the passer some, but he's not what I would call an elite athlete. He is better going right in front of him and beating the crap out of the guy that's lined up in front of his Jersey and he'll slide and he'll shoot a gap every, every now and then, but he is the prototypical Inside D lineman that can he could probably two gap if you if he wanted to, but you slam him, he'll he'll be disruptive in a power sense. So do you need those kids? Yeah, 
everybody needs those kids. And if you can get one that can play early, uh, he's got decent technique, not necessarily great, but he's got decent technique. I think he would play in, in Houston's too deep pretty quick. He might even start. I don't know their depth chart on the D line for, you know, coming up, but he's going to compete. He's 280 plus. You can never have enough of those guys. It's the same thing. You just, it's just the same thing over and over. As many massive athletes as you can get. That's what Houston's trying to do. Well, and he adds to a depth chart. And before we move on to Gaston, talk like, ha- here you reiterate, because I've said it a couple times, the depth chart is important. It's not just your starting line as you move in the Big 12. Oh, yeah. right? You've got to rotate guys at D line, man. Because think about it um, Gundy at Oklahoma State, he is not fun to prepare for. Off the record conversations with defensive coordinators about him would probably involve a lot of cussing because it's such a pain to prepare for all their packages. No huddle. One, and they're very, 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 very well coached. Uh, people can like him or not. He, he can flat out coach offense. They always score and they run multiple sets, blah, blah, blah. You better be able to rotate guys because they're going to score points. They're going to be on the field. If your D line gets tired by like middle of the third quarter against somebody like that, same with Texas Tech. TCU it's not fun you have to have a ton of D linemen so and one of the keys is early in the game having a kid like this that can play the run really well and at least limit their options if you take away Oak State's run game historically they're in trouble they have good receivers don't get me wrong but they don't especially like right now they don't have a guy that's a first round pick that can just kind of they can throw for 400 and rush for 40 they don't have that kind of offense and I don't think too many teams do. That's another reason that Houston is really focusing on massive guys. Teams are going to throw the ball, but if you can take away the run, you got a pretty damn good chance. Well, and so obviously that's a big signing for Houston. Um, back on signing day, we think of signing as a high school recruiting day. A kid named Juwan Gaston showed up. Juwan Gaston was uh, listed at 5'11, 185. Um, he's also uh, played his. Uh, junior college football in Northeast Mississippi. Um, he, and we talked a little bit at the time about how important it is to add in a similar idea, like adding rotational corners as you move in the Big 12 and, and DBs because of how much they pass the ball around in that league. Um, Gaston had an impressive spring. We had no spring game to break down the film on. What do you remember about Gaston as a, as a prep or have, what do you remember hearing about him as a JUCO kid? Well, th- this is a kid that I've seen his film. Um, he can run. He's explosive. Like his first step explosion is real deal. It's NFL level. Uh, punt returner. He's the kind of guy that if you do not corral, one, the, if there's one guy in front of him, I'll take Gaston. You can have the other guy every time. He's that guy. He is twitchy. Um, he has a bit of an offensive mentality when he gets the ball, whether it's a pick or whatever. He'll. I mean, he wants to score. He's that guy that can that can turn around. He'll if he doesn't start at Houston quickly, it's because something with the playbook. It's not going to be from a physical contribution standpoint. He is a dude. So the, again, they are upgrading by taking kids like this, and he's got some pretty good size too. So I'm not worried about him playing. He, he's a guy Houston did well to get. Well, and when you think about like guys that play corner and play in the punt return and that kind of stuff, would you see his impact more in the special teams role? Or do you think he's really going to – like he's a rotational kind of guy that quickly if he gets the plays down? I mean, if he started, it wouldn't surprise me at all. He has the physical traits to play in the SEC. It's just, you know, the kids that end up at JUCO, it's usually because they've, they've goofed up academically and or socially. It's going to be off-the-field stuff that dictates what he does. So, I mean, projecting him like any junior college kid is about maturity – and him sticking to his P's and Q's. It's not going to be physical. Well, and that's a nice little segue into what I'd like to make the third segment. Um, junior college kids as a whole and as a strategy. Um, now, Dana Holgerson made some money on this at West Virginia with second chance kids and junior college kids. He's trying to do the same thing at Houston. And interestingly enough, he and his staff actually went lower on the number of actual high school kids they signed in 2023's class. Right and pulled in a bunch of transfers and junior college kids now. Um, as, a, as a guy that does recruiting for a living and has lived this for a long time, Brian, what do you make of that as a, like a, a thought process in recruiting? And again, like some people love Dana, some people hate him. He can coach the crap out of an offense. Um, what, do, what do you think about that as a strategy moving into the Big 12? I think short term, it's the only option they have. And the reason I say that is they're not going to get the kids that they really want out of the high school ranks. They're not. 
most of the four and five star kids, this, this is a coach. I can't remember which guy it is, which I could give him credit, made a great statement to me. I was at a practice sometime in the last year or so. He said they're logo chasers. I said, what the hell does that mean? And he said they're interested on the, with the logo, with the coaches on the sideline that have prestige that you see on Sports Center and stuff. Houston doesn't fit that. It's just true. So until you start beating some of them, or like let's say in the in the first year, let's say Houston goes to the Big 12 championship game. I have no idea. It's Big 12 predictions haven't been good for a long time. <laughs> for I mean, fair, it's, fair. it's I mean, who picked TCU? Raise your hand. I'm not raising mine. Okay. <laughs> Neither did hardly anybody else. The point is this: they need some kind of splash to change this long term. And that's how you win long term. Okay. But if you get say on average five kids a year out of the junior college ranks and you get five kids a year out of the transfer portal that can help your team be either a starter co-starter you know in the rotation then you can take a little more time recruit Houston hard and East Texas and Southern Louisiana and stuff and you can be fine with red shirt and kids and kind of doing it the old-fashioned way winning with junior seniors and fifth year seniors you can piece it together it's unusual it's not traditional but it'll win. And to be honest, it's not a lot different than what Houston did in the 70s and 80s. They yeah. they had some really good teams, and they took a lot of JUCO kids then, too. So I think that for now, they're going to have to lean a little heavier on the JUCO kids and take some chances. But if they can win short term, you'll see the number, like, if, let's say it's 10, it'll go to, like, six. A few more high school kids. And some of the kids that they're getting in high school won't be two and three star. They'll be more three and four. And occasionally, you might even get a five star kid. So it's about winning. They got to win short term with this, though. They can't miss. They have to do it now. Well, and we'll obviously be following and we'll be sure to bring it back on when more kids sign and commit to Houston. Um, when you say the 70s and 80s, though, if you're you're talking Andre Ware, like like that's the kind of stuff we could really get like that. We're all into that. They that's, always that's took exciting. A few Juco kids then and they would win with them. And they got more kids then. They had a you know, more powerful. Pro. They were ranked the top 20 pretty consistently. Man, they were their offense was ridiculous. I remember them as a kid. They annihilated teams. So, yeah, they always had a couple of JUCO kids, and it certainly didn't hurt them then. Why would that be any different now? It's funny. When you think of Houston, you always think of the same kind of a bunch of kids you hadn't heard of, you know, the occasional star, a bunch of kids you hadn't heard of, and they have always, for decades, mentioned 70 days, always scored a lot of points. Yes, um, they I, did. Just a, a, a weird thing that's always, always happened. Brian, you are – all over the place this June, talking to recruits, talking to coaches, talking to other scouts, looking at camps, looking at kids, following visits. Where can people find you and your work best and keep up with what you're doing? Uh, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, Instagram is the one I'm building, but uh, Twitter is where I'm at the most. And all three of them have the same handle, at FBScout underscore Florida. I'm a, I'm a guy that's going to be all over the place this month. There's going to be random stuff could be any school. Uh, I live in Florida, so it's more Southeast-based. But I'm going to be talking, especially on my YouTube channel, i got something I've got planned in the next day or so, talking about national recruiting, some schools like Houston, how do they crash the party. There, there's some really unique topics because this, for people that don't know, this weekend is the beginning of all the runs of kids going all over the country, flying, you know, Delta and all these companies, making a lot of money off these schools, <laughs> sending these kids to visits. And we just got to find out where they go, why they like them, why they don't. So I'll be talking about that on my social media handles. Again, that's Brian Smith is at FB Scout underscore Florida. Thank you for coming on the show today, Brian. Thanks for shedding some light on Juco kids. It's hard to find and talk about that sometimes, but thank you for coming on. Absolutely. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much again to Brian for coming on today and talking about Houston Cougar junior college recruiting very very specific but very very necessary as that's the style of recruiting that uh, daniel holgerson's decided he wants to implement the most as of late so thanks again brian for helping explain some of the recruits and some of the targets that way uh, you can follow him again at fb scout underscore florida he does all national recruiting just based out of florida so make sure you check him out you can find me and all my commentary at Painsworth 512. It's P-A-I-N-S W-O-R-T-H 512 on Twitter, Instagram, and all your favorite social media handles. We'll be happy to talk all things Houston Cougars as far as football recruiting, basketball transfer portals, uh, NBA draft and Cougs, the Rockets, Astros, Houston Cougar football, basketball, baseball season's wrapped up, but you feel me on that one. Anything Cougs, we got it. Find me at Painsworth 512. If you're looking for a second listen of the day, first of all, we appreciate you making us your first. But for a second, I'm going to say Locked on Texans. 
because they're starting to figure out who this Tank Dell guy is. And trust me, they're doing a great job breaking down how great of a fit Tank is at the NFL level. So go check that show out as well. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Lockdown Cougs is a proud member of the Lockdown Podcast Network. That means your team every day. Go Cougs.